Man's West Bitcoin struggles retesting that $24,000 mark. I found some on-chain metrics which should build our confidence and conviction in this next move for Bitcoin. We're also going to take a look at the key levels in the Bitcoin chart as well as an update on AUSD, the stablecoin, which depegged on the Polkadot network. That and a lot more. Guys, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's get ready for this exciting Tuesday. And the big focus on the markets today are retail earnings. Earnings. Yes, retail earnings are coming out today. We've kicked off with Home Depot, who beat earnings and stood by their 2022 guidance. You can see here that they beat revenue and they beat earnings per share, which is really, really good. And more importantly, they kept their outlook for the rest of 22 very, very positive. Now, next up is Walmart. If these can stay green today, if Walmart can beat as well, then we could be getting a green market again in the equity markets. And hopefully we can see a move on Bitcoin. Now, there is one slight concern. Now, we're going to have to go back into the Bitcoin chart and understand this. So here on Bitcoin, we got the breakout. And you saw, I'm just going to switch over to the 4-hourly to make this a little bit clearer. We got the breakout. We tried to run up over the weekend to 25. And you got the wick up here to 25 on uh, Monday, yesterday. But you saw that I mentioned there was bearish divergence. Okay, so we saw the bearish divergence where the price was going higher, but the RSI was ticking down. And that was a worry for me that we were going to change direction. And you can see that's exactly what happened. We came back down and uh, came back down to the 20. 24,000 mark. And now the question is, can we hold 24,000? Which was very hard to break, right? One, two, three. Eventually we broke, came back down, went back up, came back down. Are we going to hold or are we going to fall back down? If we fall back down, we could be coming back to the long-term trend line for some support before we can go again. If we lose this long-term trend support, that's when things don't get fun. But we do have plenty of room here. If we bring out the EMA ribbon, you can see here, if I just switch over to the daily chart, uh, I do want to show you here, you've got, you've got enough room here on the EMA ribbon to come down to that kind of 23,000 level, 23,200 ideally, and get that support from EMA ribbon and then bounce back up again with good positive volume, right? Volumes don't look the best here, right? Even when we broke through 25,000, I said that the same in the videos, the volume wasn't looking exciting. What's some exciting volume coming through, pushing past 25, and then things can really start heading to the upside. Now, the concerning thing was, you can see here we've had three days of red here on uh on bitcoin now if i switch across to the equity markets and let's take the nasdaq the qqq you can see the last two days including today uh have been green right so we're opening up green today you can see green uh yesterday sorry you can see green here on on the 15th of august uh, and you can see green the day before so what i want to say here is why are we not managing to keep that uh correlation why are we not managing to to keep that move here, where on Friday, you had the equity markets move green, on Monday, you had the equity markets move green, and yet Bitcoin yesterday was unable, if we just switch back, to have a green day. Now, we know that's due to a bunch of different technical levels. We know there's a few people shorting Bitcoin, and that's causing some of the issues. Uh, if I bring out the VPVR, you can still see the 25 level is a, an interesting level to break through. But more importantly, it doesn't look like we've finished breaking through this 24 level. Remember, this last bar here sits here at 24,300. It doesn't look like we've cleared fully through that level. So we've come back to retest it. So we need to get through this level. Like I said, things will definitely get much easier once we're past this level here. I mean, you can see we're even in the late 24,000s up towards 25,000, things do start to get smoother. And as you can see, I'm still in my long trade waiting for this to start heading towards that 27, 28,000 region. Now, we've got some on-chain metrics to back up some of our thoughts. So I wanted to go through a few of these. You have to bear with me because on-chain metrics are always a little bit more complicated. I want to try to simplify this as best as possible for everybody. So the chart you're looking at here is the percent of supply last active one plus year ago. So this is somebody who's bought their Bitcoin and they've not touched it for at least 365 days. Now, what I want to point you to is the bit above my head. Now, what you can see there is we formed an all-time high here uh, in May. So in other words, one year previous to that, okay, so if you go back to the May of 2021, when Bitcoin was uh, coming on its way down here uh, towards its lows from 64 down to 29, we were at a high in terms of percent of supply last active one plus year ago. In other words, people were hodling, okay? Now, this was interesting because this was after the great miner resignation. So what happened was when China banned the miners, we saw that there was a lot of hodling activity. A lot of people were holding onto their Bitcoin and saying, we're not selling. And they held for that 365-day period. 
now we can see we're getting very, very close to that same figure again. We're currently at 65%. We're just a couple of, well, I think it's just like 0.7% away from the all-time high in May earlier this year of hodling activity. So this is really good strength here and is showing a lot of conviction from these people who are holding for longer periods of time. And the point I wanted to make, and I'm going to show you a few more charts to back this up, is we are seeing a transition. I've said this a few times in my previous on-chain videos. We are seeing a transition, a distribution from short-term mind-focused holders onto more patient long-term holders. And that's really important if we want to sustain move to the upside. Okay, we need to remove the Taurus and the Bitcoin needs to be in place of people who are unwilling, who are not going to sell. And the challenge you have is you've got a bunch of people who were buying on the run-up to 69,000 in November of 2021. Those people have been sitting on losses since November 2021, which is an awfully long period of time, particularly if you bought a $68,000, $69,000 here on Bitcoin, and now you've been watching it fall, 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 fall. Eventually, you capitulate, right? When it's been at this long, you just want to take your losses, you fall out of love with Bitcoin, you sell. But the key thing is at that point, you're selling to somebody with more conviction. You're selling to somebody who is a little bit more patient. They bought Bitcoin at 18,000, 19,000, 20, 23, 24. And they're waiting for Bitcoin, not just to get back to all time highs at 69,000, but they're in on this journey to get Bitcoin to 100,000, et cetera. So you've got a, a, a completely different demographic of buyer who's going to be hodling. And that's really, really important that we're seeing that come through in the on-chain data. To further back this idea up, take a look at the HODL waves. Now, what you can see in the HODL waves is the percent of circuit, this, and what this is showing is a few different cohorts. You're going to have to take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the chart. But in essence, you got this peach color at the bottom here, which is uh, people who have been holding for six months to 12 months. Then the middle color is one year to two years, and the green is two years to three years. So in other words, six month holders all the way up to three year holders. And what you've seen is that overall, since the minor migration, the great migration from last year, around that summer period of last year, this, this cohort has increased from 27% of circulating supply to 37% of circulating supply. This is really, really good. Again, you want the coins to be in the hands of people who have a long-term horizon. Not tourists who are in crypto for a couple of weeks, couple of months, six weeks, eight weeks, here and there, moving the price around. You want it to move into the hands of people who have proven to not really care about the price, who accumulate regardless. And we've been seeing that here is this has been increasing. Supply between six months and three years has expanded by 10% from 27% of circulating supply up towards 37% of circulating supply. And you can see particularly this demographic of people who've been holding for between one year and two year age band are swelling in volume. So these are people who have bought all the way, I mean, two years ago takes you back to August 2020. These are people who've been holding since then. So these are long-term people who aren't just seeing Bitcoin for a quick buck and they're willing to hold for the long-term uh, view of Bitcoin. Now, also, we can take a look at the realized cap. Now, it's important to understand that realized cap is similar to market cap, but it doesn't take the current market cap price. Okay, so you, normally your normal market cap takes the current market price and it multiplies by the number of coins in supply. What realized cap does, it takes your realized price. So when you bought the coin, what was it trading at? Okay, so what we want to see here is we're seeing, again, a nice uptrend here. We're seeing 63% of realized cap is now being hodled by the sixth month to three-year cohort. So the same cohort we were just looking at, these three different colors, it's gone from, if I just pop me out of the way, let's just, you go over there, mate. You can see 11% of the realized cap, okay, has now gone to 63% of the realized cap. So in terms of the dollar, the dollar amount, right, the USD amount that this cohort is holding, this six-month to three-year cohort, people are holding for a decent period of time, They've gone from 11% of the cap market cap to 63% of the realized market cap. Really, really good. And again, showing an expansion, like it says on this graph, in old coins. Why is this important? Well, what it now shows is that 37% of circulating supply, which I showed you in the previous chart. Remember, it said 37% of circulating supply is held by this bunch of cohort, These this cohort. This cohort, in that 37% of circulating supply, actually account for 63% of the realized cap. So these are serious, serious people with a very important amount of the bit of the realized cap in their possession and they and they've showing good tendency to hold which is really really good now the opposite would mean oh well if that was the opposite and you've got 60 percent say of the realized cap in the hands of people who normally trade within three to four weeks 
that would be a problem, right? Because then you're going to get crazy volatility and fluctuations because they're short-term minded. If the price is not moving in their favor, they'll sell. That's going to create more downward pressure on Bitcoin. We're seeing the opposite of that, which is we're going to see some more upward pressure because people are holding and they've shown that they're holding regardless of the price, okay? And this is important. What you can see through this graphic is they continued to, this cohort continued to huddle right? Despite the lows, the lows in summer 2021 uh, of 29, when we went to 29, and even when we went up to 69, they continued to huddle. And then all the way back down now, where we are now, um, behind my head there, they just continue to accumulate. This is just up and to the right, despite the fluctuations in price that we've been seeing. So definitely hodder, hodler mentality indeed. And then the final chart I want to share with you is a very interesting one. This is something called the R hodl ratio or the realized hodl ratio. And in essence, I just wanted to further emphasize the fact that we're seeing this distribution. The, the people who are holding Bitcoin now are not the same as they were previously. So let's look at this. Now, first I want to under understand the colors of the arrows. So a purple arrow, Okay, in other words, when our huddle is increasing, it's showing that young coins have dominance in the supply. More young coins are coming online than old coins. When it's blue, you can see that's an equilibrium. There's a transition where they're equally moving at the same rate. And then when it's green, old coins are taking dominance. And as you can see, it's a sharp trend to the downside currently where old coins are taking dominance over these new coins, these tourists, these ones with shorter term mindsets. Now that was different previously, right? When Bitcoin was running up uh, towards its levels here, when you saw Bitcoin initially run up to 64, you saw that this was a whole bunch of short young coin supply dominance. More and more people coming into the market, very normal in a bull market. Market. Very, very normal in a bull market. Young coins come in, and normally the older coins are happy to sell to them at this point. They, they've been in the market. They understand this is a bull run up towards 64, and generally they're trimming a little bit of profits, allowing these young coins to come in. Then when you fell to 64 and then back up to 69, that was an equilibrium pace. And then when we started falling from there all the way to the lows of 17,600, you've now seen that these young coins who were buying on the up run started selling distributing across to the old coins who are ready, ready to buy at low prices and ready to hold for the next bear run where they'll repeat this process. So there you have it. That is the on-chain metrics we're seeing. Really interesting insight, which further gives us conviction that we're getting the right type of demographic holding Bitcoin right now. The cohorts of hodling is looking good. The transition from these young coins to these old coins is looking very positive and fits the narrative that we're looking for. Fear and greed index this morning is sitting at 44. Markets are feeling very comfortable at this level. I think if we lose 24, we'll see that notch down. But at this level at 24K, markets are feeling confident. More people than not are starting to understand that we could be seeing a big rally now. And it would be pretty reckless to be shorting Bitcoin right now. So I think you've got these two cohorts of people, some who are in a long position, who are ready to see the market have a relief rally like myself. And then you've got others who are sitting on the sidelines, not necessarily shorting, but just sitting on the sidelines because they're not sure. And I think those are probably the best two stances to be taking right now. I would definitely would not be in a short position of betting against the setup from a technical or fundamental or macro perspective that we're seeing on Bitcoin right now. Quick update on what was going on with Akala. Akala stablecoins nears back to its $1 peg after community burns 1.2 billion AUSD minted by explorers. Remember, AUSD is the stablecoin on, uh, on the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, on Akala. And what we could see was that an exploiter went in and just started minting $1.2 billion uh, of AUSD. Remember, these are pegged one-to-one -one with the dollar and the peg fell really, really low. I mean, we can pull up the chart here and let's take a look at this. I mean, look at that. This peg fell all the way down to 0 0.05. Ouch. 0 0.05 here on the peg, but they managed to recover. Now sitting at 92 cents, still got some work to do to get it back to the peg. But in essence, what they did was they voted for a governance proposal and they decided to burn their erroneously printed stable coins. Okay, so that's what they went ahead and did. They burnt the 1.2, $1.3 billion of AUSD that was minted. Now they're saying that some money was left. Over 99% of the exploited AUSD remained on a color, which allowed them to burn it, of course. But a small proportion was swapped for ACA and other tokens and tra transferred out from a color parachain uh, and so they think the damage was probably around 0 to $10 million, okay? Now, look, this is not going to be the first, nor is it going to be the last uh, stablecoin exploit we've had. It's very difficult to build a very good stablecoin. And I guess this is just one of those areas where I just like to say, look, use those stablecoins as and when you need them. But I would not be sitting for a long period of time on any stablecoin. It's a necessary evil to a certain extent, but do not just be leaving your wealth lying in huge amounts on these stablecoins 
use it as a gateway, use it as a proxy to get into the crypto you want to get to into the final end game. Similar to bridges. Don't use these bridges if you, sorry, as in don't leave l large amounts of money sitting in these bridges. Get across to the place you want to get to and get back out. If you're sitting on a bunch of wrapped Bitcoin or anything else, just it just doesn't make sense for me. Be in the hardcore asset that you want to be in. Either you're in fiat currency, either you're in your end game crypto to be sitting on large amounts of um large amounts of uh, stable coins at any one given time on any network is asking for trouble because they're all susceptible. They all have their risks. I've done a breakdown of all the key stable coins. You guys can go watch it. I'll link it up somewhere here. They all have risks. They're all subject to being targeted by exploiters because it's a natural place for people to exploit. And speaking of stable coins, we know what happened with Terra Luna. Go watch my breakdown uh, where I reacted to the interview that Do Kwon gave after breaking his silence after three months uh, since the $100 billion collapse of the Terra Luna ecosystem. Make sure you go watch that. Coming back to the Bitcoin chart, let's just wrap this up and see what do we need to see happen today. Uh, we've got the EMA ribbon. As you can see, we need that to hold up as support here on the daily. If it's just a retest, then that's fine. Even if you wanted to come back down long-term trend line, that's fine. I, I won't be stopped out on my position at this point. I'd want it to come down to 23 and get a good strong bounce. Where things start to negate is when we start losing this trend line. If we lose this trend line, I'd be worried we're heading into 22 and then back into this channel. But we're quite far away from that. More interestingly, and the bit I want to focus on today is can we remain correlated to the US equity markets? It's a little bit worrying that yesterday US equity markets finished off green bitcoin in the red i don't want to see that when we were falling to the downside we were correlated when equity markets were red we fell red and now we're not catching up with equity markets now i don't think it's a case that we're never going to catch up i think bitcoin is just more explosive once it gets through certain key levels it just goes boom versus equity markets which will go a bit more steady so i'm not too concerned but i would like to see this correlation come back because i mean we've got um smp and, and nasdaq back at may levels whereas if bitcoin was back at may levels that would be thirty nine thousand dollars on bitcoin and we're sitting here at 24 4,000. So a whole bunch of catching up to do for Bitcoin, but that just means when the move to the upside does happen, it's more likely to be explosive and enjoyable. So guys, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Go watch the Dokon interview here. You'll definitely enjoy that one. And I'll see you in the next one.